Hello and welcome to week 1, unit 4 of our Open SAP course, SAP Cloud Application Studio for SAP Business by Design. I am Guru Prasad Dorai and I am a senior project consultant with SAP Business by Design development team. In the previous unit, we discussed about the user story and the different views for each of the persona. The underlying entity of each of these persona is a business object. With this background, let's start the unit on business object. I'll first take you through the concept of business object and then I'll create a custom business object in SAP Cloud Application Studio. A business object is a technical object which represents any business transaction document in SAP Business by Design. For example, the underlying business object for a sales order business document is a sales order business object. Business objects can be of two types, namely standard or custom business object. Standard business objects are delivered by SAP, for example, sales order or purchase order. And custom business objects are created by partners or customers through the Cloud Studio. The structure of the business object is depicted here on the right side, which contains nodes which form the hierarchical structure or a tree-like structure. Every business object will have a root node which represents the header of the business object. Hence, each business object has a root node by default and may or no, may not contain the sub nodes. The left hand side of the business object represents the attributes of the business object like the elements, the actions, the associations and the dependent object. Now let us get a bit little more detail into the attributes of the business object. Number 1, the elements. Once the business object and its nodes are defined, you could assign elements of a particular data type to the node. SAP Business by Design offers a wide variety of data types out of the box which can be consumed during the creation of a business object. For example, date, amount, currency, text, etc. could be used as a data type. List of the available data types can be viewed in the repository explorer. Number 2, the actions. The actions defined in the business objects are mapped to the user interface. The user uses these actions to change the status of a business document or to perform any checks on the business document. Number 3, the associations which are of two types, internal or composite association and external or cross business object association. By default, the framework provides composite association and cross deployment, I am sorry, cross business object association has to be defined in the business object. Like the one here mentioned association employee to the standard business object employee. Composite association can be from root to child 1 and from child 1 to sub child 1. The association between child 1 to sub child 1 is called the two parent association and the association between the sub child 1 to the root is called as the two parent or the two root association in this case. Similarly, we could define associations for the other nodes as well. Note that the custom business objects and all its attributes are, are explained or defined in the Cloud Studio using the business object definition language or in short called the BODIL. Standard business objects can be extended which will be covered as part of week 3. Now let us take a look into the deployment unit. A deployment unit is a piece of software that can be operated within the foundation layer or isolated from the other deployment units. SAP Business by Design is organized into multiple deployment units based on the application areas. For example, customer relationship management, supply chain management, financials and etc. The foundation deployment unit where the master data resides like the employee, the product or the customer. Business objects which are part of foundation deployment unit can be accessed directly from other deployment units. Here as an example in the illustration shows that the CRM and the financials deployment unit access the data from the foundation layer. However, the vice versa is not possible that is business objects which are part of the foundation deployment unit cannot access objects which are part of the other deployment units. Only a query 
could be used to read the data of the business object. You cannot directly change data of a business object residing in a different deployment unit, but you can read the data of the business object residing in a different deployment unit through a query or a retrieve or using an association. To change the data between two different op to, between the objects of op business objects which are lying in two different deployment units, you can make use of an internal communication which is an asynchronous message based communication between the two different two different deployment units. Here as an example, the customer relationship management sends a request to the financials deployment unit and in turn you get the response back from the financials deployment unit to the customer relationship management. Now let us take a business case. Let us say you have to create a sales order in the customer relationship management and then there is a message which is sent to the supply chain management deployment unit. The order then gets executed and when an invoice is created, a message is sent from the CRM deployment unit to the financials for the invoice processing. Note that when we create a solution, a deployment unit was specified. By default, any number of business objects created in that solution would reside in that particular deployment unit. For any reason, if you wish to change the deployment unit of the business object, you could use the annotation change, you could use the annotation deployment unit and specify the deployment unit name. With the understanding we just had on the business concepts, on the concepts of business objects, let us log into the cloud application studio and create the required custom business objects as part of our user story. So here I am, I have logged into the SAP Cloud Application Studio and I have opened the solution which we created in the previous unit. I would go ahead and create a new item and define a business object for the job profile. The job profile business object would be used by the administrator to define the job profile attributes. So I give a name, job profile and I click on add. And you could see that there is a new file created in the solution which says job profile.po. This is the custom object which we just created. Let us go ahead and define the attributes for this business object. Let me say I want to create a field with the name job ID. This, this is how you specify with the name uh, with the keyword element and the name to the element and then you have to provide the data type. The data type I would use here would be ID. In case you want to see the list of data types, you could do a control space which would give you the list of objects available in the repository. So I specify ID as the data type for this job ID and then I create another element for the title of the job. and I could give a data type for this. Let us say I give long description and also note that I could specify the UI attributes or the UI labels for this by annotating the keyword label and I specify what should be the name for this element for the business user to understand this data, this element. So I specify as job ID. Similarly, I specify this for title as well. And note that by default, the SAP framework of, of business by design provides an alternative key, sorry, provides a key, but then in case if I want to provide an alternative key for the business object, I could do that with the annotation alternative key. Now we saw that in the demo there were other attributes pertaining to the job profile bio. I already have this that in the notepad. I would just copy paste the same.
Okay. So now once you have the structure ready, I see that there are certain errors. I have not defined the employment type code or the offer status code. Now let us see how do we do, do this. For this, I click on add new item. I select the option called code list data type and I provide the name employment type. Note that though it shows that the element or the data type for the element employment type is employment type code, I just specify the employment type. The code is automatically suffixed by the framework. So I click on add, give the description. I give values to this code list now, part time employee, or contract employee or a full time employee. Click on next and click on finish and I save and activate this employment type code list. go back to the job profile bio and now you see that the error for the employment type code is not there anymore so similarly i create the other one for the offer status click on add specify or provide a description for this code list So, the status could be accepted or rejected based on the interview process by the candidate. Save and activate once again. Now I go back to the job profile bio. Yeah. Also you note that I have provided other attributes of this business object like the actions, action published job with the keyword action. Now this would change the status of a particular job profile from open to publish. We would see how to do this later in the scripting unit. So I have also provided a dependent object text collection which is a child node which signifies that in case I have to provide a detailed description about this job profile I could do so by using this node text collection. Also I have provided a child node with the name candidates applied which would signify for this particular job profile how many candidates have applied for this. So this is a holistic view for the administrator who could then go ahead and schedule the interview process for the manager. Now I would go ahead and save and activate this business object. Note that the other business, the other codeless data types like the job status and the employment status also has to be defined but as in the interest of time I have already predefined those in my solution. You could refer the code list values as part of the exercise which is available in this unit. So once this is activated, the other two BOs pertaining to the other personas like the candidates and the manager also have to be defined. In the interest of time, I have already created the other BOs like the job listing which is applicable for the candidates view and the job applications which is required for the managers. With this, I go back to the slides, I have created the custom business objects. I will go back to the slides and then summarize the unit. Yeah, with this we come to the end of week 1, unit 4 on business objects and here is a summary of the unit. We saw what a business object is and what are its attributes, understood what a deployment unit is and what is its significance and finally we created a business objects in the solution. Kindly note that the structure of each of these business objects is available as part of the exercise for this unit. 
please go ahead and make use of it and create the objects in your solution. See you in the next unit where we will discuss about the implementation of business logic for each of these business objects. Thank you and goodbye.